All right, so once you've done that step at the top and you remove those 14 millimeters from the top of the strut tower, you want to come back down here. Whenever we remove these, we got to push these all the way out like this. But this step's a little tricky because you got an axle shaft that's hooked up to your hub assembly. And so what happens is once you remove both of these, this hub assembly is going to come laying back. And if it lays back too far, you're going to overextend the axle shaft. And you do not want to do that. And if you do that, you're going to have a whole other process to go through to put it back together. And so you got to be really careful on this process, on this step. When you push these out, you can pull the bottom one out all the way and see how it laid back a little bit already. Now there's nothing else holding the strut assembly in there. So you gotta have, if you have a friend to help you hold this thing up while you're pulling these out, because it's real tricky. You gotta make sure this, this assembly here, this hub assembly is straight before you remove these because when you remove them, it's gonna come flying back and you'll overextend that axle. And so I removed one. I'm gonna try to do this all by myself. It'd be great if I had some help, but let's see how it goes. All right, just drop that bolt. And see, now there's nothing else mounting this strut assembly to the car. So, what you want to do is you're going to separate it here. But this is the tricky part. Make sure you don't overextend that axle shaft. See, if you had somebody helping you, they can help you hold this strut assembly while you bring it down. And we got that down. So I want to show you what you could do. If you look down here, this is the axle shaft. And these are the joints. What usually happens when people are inexperienced in this is they let this hub assembly come out. If you look here, see how it extends? See, what will happen is you'll overextend it and there's the joints in there will come out of place. And you have a heck of a time putting it back together. So you make sure you don't want to do that. What I usually do is you can grab something and tie it from here to maybe some of the something up here so it holds this up against the vehicle so it doesn't come flying back at you while you're getting the new assembly put together or whatever you're doing. So make sure you're very careful on this step. And so luckily for us this time, I was able not to overextend it and we're on our way. We can start reassembling the vehicle. All right, once you got it all put, taken apart, you go ahead and uh, you know, you're going to reassemble the vehicle. What you want to do is grab your strut assembly. Now you see this open area here? It's where you want to feed it through. The biggest thing is, is what I see people do is, what they do is with these lines, the ABS line, maybe this brake line, they will put them on the back side of the strut assembly when they're not supposed to be. They're supposed to be in front. See the hub assembly here? It's supposed to be in the front here. And this ABS cable should be in the front as well. So I like to push them both on one side and bring the strut assembly in through this area right here. So we'll go ahead and do that now. I'll bring it in like this. And then turn it and pull it up. And into its spot. Now once you got it in like this and you're holding it up, your next step is to put the bolts on to the top so you won't have to hold it up in its place like this the whole time. Now once you're on this step, you got the strut assembly up in there. You want to put these mounting nuts back on. You can just hand tighten them from now for now. You don't have to actually tighten them up all the way. Now you can actually let go of the strut from underneath. You don't have to hold it up anymore. You get down in there and reassemble it. And this will be actually your last step for tightening it up, finishing the job. All right, your next step is to reassembling this is once you got those three nuts up at the top holding it up, what you want to do is make sure, like I said earlier, make sure that these lines, your brake line, your ABS line is on the, on the right side or in the front towards the front of the car on this side because I've seen a lot of people put them on the back side and you can't mount them up and you have to redo a bunch of things so make sure they're on this side what you want to do is you want to grab you want to grab your your bolts that you pulled out from here 
the ones that go in through here, you want to actually push this hub assembly back into the strut assembly like that. Line the hole up here and you can send this bolt all the way through. So let's see if I can do this. There you go. Just give it a wiggle, a few wiggles and pretty much now you have it all ready to be completely reassembled. And there's one more at the bottom. You can go ahead and push this like that, line up that hole and send that bolt through. All right, once you got both of these bolts all the way through, what you wanna do is get your nuts, put them back on. What you wanna make sure is when you put these bolts all the way through, make sure you send them in this way, the way you pull them out. You wanna put it in from the front to the back so the nuts are pointing to the back of the vehicle. And you can send those both through. You can actually tighten these all the way up. So you won't have to do anything else with these anymore. If you have some type of a camber system, make sure you mark the camber nut, or the, the camber bolt, make sure you're putting it back in the, in the position which we pulled it off. But if you don't, if your car is all factory, this is pretty much what you're gonna run into. And that's, now you can move on to the next step. All right, once you got those done, now your next step is to come over here on your tie rod end of this ball joint. Go ahead and remove that nut from that tie rod in. All you do is just send that thing back into its spot. Only one way it goes. Really pretty hard to mess this up. Don't put it in from underneath. It goes in from the top. And go ahead and just send that nut back through there. You can tighten that one up as well because you won't have to do anything else with this one. Um, once you get it tight, I'll go ahead and do that now. You're going to send that cotter pin back through it. I'm going to go ahead and grab my 17 and tighten this guy up. Uh, you can look up all the torque specs on these things if you're, you want to be meticulous. But we just tighten them to a good hand tight. Now what you want to do is grab your cotter pin and see how the tips are kind of out. What you want to do is bring them together so you're going to have to bend this thing to where it's closer together because you're going to be feeding it through a small tiny hole. So go, go ahead and do that and you'll see there's only one hole on this tie rod end. You just slide it back on through and then you bend the tabs like it was originally. Um, I believe it's recommended to replace these and not to reuse them. So you can go ahead and purchase that from any of your local hardware stores and just get some brand new ones and put them in there. And that concludes that step. We'll go move on to the next. All right, in this next step, once you got that tie rod all put together, you're gonna put these two lines back. They only go one way, so you really can't mess them up. Um, if you look on this brake line, see this little the lip right here, how it sticks out? This actually has to go into this groove right here. So when you're putting it back on, I mean, don't put it like this and don't tighten it up like sideways. You know, it just goes directly into that groove and sits flush. So when you put that nut in, you'll, or that bolt in, you'll see that it sits flush. So go ahead and drive that bolt back in there. I just kind of wiggle it, make sure it's flush before I cinch it up. You can tighten that with the ratchet. Now go ahead and I move to the ABS line. Now, there's a hole down here. You can see that. There's actually a tab on the ABS sensor, this tab right here, that it goes into. So what you want to do is put that tab into that hole and just line up that mounting hole and send your 10 millimeter bolt all the way through that. It's pretty much simple, straightforward, putting those two lines on. Make sure it's flush, sit in its position, and you can go ahead and tighten those bolts up as well. And I'll do that real fast, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, and this final step, once you got everything done at the bottom, remember we had sent these top nuts through, but we never tightened them up. 
So just make sure you do that. Make sure you don't leave them loose. And remember never to, not really, don't touch that center one. Just these three on the sides. And once you got that done, you can go ahead and uh, put the wheel back on, you know, get your car leveled. You can be on your way. All right, now once you got the top tightened up, you want to come down here, you're pretty much going to put the wheel back on the vehicle. Um, just the last final step, what I usually do, I just go over everything, make sure I got everything, you know, tightened down, make sure I haven't forgotten anything. Make sure your cotter pin's in there. I mean, everything should be tight. You shouldn't have no problems. So just double check your work. I always love to double check my work. Sometimes I catch something that I misplaced or forgot. So um, after you've done that, you can put your wheel back on, put your car back down on level ground, get your jacks, whatever, your safety gear off, and you'll be on your way. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Put my wheel back on. There's that. Get your lug nuts, send them through. All right, when you send the, when you're putting these lug nuts back through all the way, what you want to do is you want to tighten it in pretty much a cross pattern. You want to, you know, start here, jump to the, you know, straight across and then, you know, just like an X when you're tightening it because sometimes the wheel doesn't seat too properly. And so when you tighten one, all, one down, you'll get a gap on the other side. And when you tighten the wheel down, it won't tighten all the way down you'll have some problems. So what you want to do is make sure you crisscross when you're tightening these things. So grab your tool, your 19. If you got access to the air tools, like I said before, you know, you go ahead and use your air tools on this as well. But I'm going to do this for people at home. See what will happen is the tire will turn. What we want to do is just cinch them up as much as we can. And it'll be enough to where we can get the car on the ground and then we'll be able to tighten them up more. Because in the air, see, this is what happens. So just cinch them up as much as you can, get the car on the floor, and then go ahead and tighten them to whatever your torque specs are in your vehicle. All right, once you got the car on the floor and you're tightening these lug nuts, you know, we cinched them up in the air, but we had that problem with that tire rotating on us. But when it's on the ground, all the weight of the vehicle is on there and it's also in park or the emergency brakes pulled. So what you can do now is actually tie them up more without having an issue. And like I said, you can use your air gun on this. You know, you can get your torque specs out and tighten these down to whatever your vehicle calls. And that will conclude this video, this tutorial video.